pressing the trigger and no air comes out, as you can see I'm doing right now. It's probably a really simple fix. If no air is coming out when you're pressing the trigger, the first thing you should check is your nozzle cap, which is right there. Start loosening up your nozzle cap and then voila, now air is coming out. So let's go into how we're gonna fix that. So removing the nozzle cap separately right here. Some of you may not even have known that piece comes out. If your nozzle's already been cleaned and all that, there's no sense in taking the rest of the airbrush apart to handle that. So as you can see, it has gotten a little bit of gunk dried up in there. So you're just gonna take your thinner, I like to use a paintbrush, and get in here and clean this out. I found that soft bodied, um, your soft bristled airbrush brushes are one of the best things I can use to clean my airbrush because I don't have to worry about them doing any gouging and damaging everything. The performance of your airbrush is so dependent on the nozzle cap that is definitely not a place that you want to damage. It's not completely clogged like this one was completely stopping up the air. The same thing can cause a lot of performance issues in your airbrush, causing weird spray patterns and the inability to get fine lines, as well as some more things we're gonna go over in this video. Air should come out of this hole, then air will travel through those three holes in this particular instance on the eclipse caps. And then it comes out of those three holes, which you can tell that particular one needs cleaning. And then it goes around and over the nozzle like that. The air flows over the nozzle and then it pulls out and creates a vacuum as it's exiting the hole on the nozzle cap. There are a couple of physical reasons that can happen and we're gonna go into those in just a second so don't run off. But why does this happen, you know, when it gets come dirty? It's usually because you're not leaving the air on before you release the paint. If you're doing a lot of stippling work, that can happen. In my particular case, I left my brush with paint and solvents in it when I took off on vacation. And then I didn't bother to clean it when I got back because as soon as I noticed that was the problem, I knew I wanted to make a video about this. So I left my brush dirty for two whole weeks until I can get around to making a video. Of course, I've got 12 or more airbrushes, so we were good. Let's get back to work. In case you didn't know, for instance, you can get a 0.5 nozzle for an Awada Eclipse, and it will physically bolt up with your 0.35 nozzle cap. I wanted to show you guys an easy way to tell the difference, aside from the holes being a different size. And on the left is the 0.5, and on the right is the 0.35. If you notice, hopefully you can see that, there is a little ring groove around the 0.35 and there is no such one on the 0.5. When I reassemble, I like to use a soft body wax and take something light and put it on the threads there. A lot of people use beeswax and that's fine, but I found beeswax to be a little bit hard and you can get soft body wax in an at-home hair waxing kit. Make sure you use something softer than the brass nozzles when you put your brass material, when you put that back together, because you do not want to damage those threads. This is one of the most critical performance parts of your airbrush. I'm going to reassemble, and to be honest with you guys, I know I just showed some bad form. You should not leave your needle in when you're working on something like this. Do like I said, and not like I was just doing. And uh, that should put us back in business. If you have a badger, it's going to look something like this. And if you have skipping issues, it's related to air leaks right there at the nozzle cap. Like uh, on my PS289 here, I never removed that nozzle. So every once in a while, I may get in here, remove the nozzle cap, and re-clean it out and assemble this because when I clean out my PS289, the entire head assembly, 
And then what I usually do is take a striping brush and clean out through that hole and it keeps me from wear and tear by removing the nozzle and putting the nozzle back repeatedly. If after taking it apart and checking for cleaning and so forth, this is something that occasionally happens. You want to take a good look at this nozzle, which you should be looking at from time to time. You're gonna to need to look under magnifying glass. Of course, this one's in great shape. However, if that nozzle, as it's repeatedly, the, the needle is constantly being pushed in there. If you have pushed hard on the needle up in there, it is possible for this nozzle to get flared out on the end and you need to see if it starts looking like a trumpet on the end, what'll happen, of course, it'll start filling up some of the space in the hole that we have here and starting to block off airflow and performance will degrade significantly. Plus it'll, it'll start spraying a little bit weird. Um, so at that point, you would have to replace the nozzle. So make sure you hit the subscribe button because we're going to have a whole bunch more repair type content coming out in the very, very near future. I'm going through a whole series of that and you don't want to miss anything, right? So make sure you do that. Hit the notification bell. I'm Bill Kennedy with the Airspace. We appreciate you and I hope you got a lot out of today's video. Y'all have a great day. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye.